Now we're going to do some checks to see is, does that body shell fit nicely on the chassis? Uh, is it okay? Does it need any further trimming? I have a block, but this block is a bit of a recessed block. It's got a recess at the front. It has recess for rear tyres, etc., but I'm not putting those on yet. So I'm going to use my recess block. I'm going to put my chassis onto the recess block. Now this is just being held up slightly by the braids. So I'm going to make sure that those braids are properly flat. Again, in one of my other videos, you shall see how you prepare braids and how you make sure they're nice and flat. So I won't go through that here, but I'll put a link to that video on the screen. There we go. Now the chassis sits nice and flat onto the block. So I can take my body shell and I can pin it to the chassis. Again, I only have to pin it loosely at this stage just to see, does it all match up? Does it sit okay? There we go. We can see how it sits. So initial thoughts are, yes, the body's not wrinkled at the side. It seems to match up nicely with the pinholes. So let's put it on the block and see how it sits at the front. Now at this point, I might want to just raise the back of the chassis a fraction. So just to simulate it having a little bit of ground clearance. So I'll put a little bit of ruler under that and then I'll lift it up and I'm gonna have a look all the way around the body shell just to see what sort of clearance there is around the front. I probably need to trim the front slightly, but we'll do that in a minute. And then, so I'm just gonna look at how well it sits on that chassis. So I'm checking, is it lifting up the pan? So I'm putting a little bit of pressure on each pan there to see if the pans are sitting down nice and flat. I can see literally at the front of the body shell, there's a slight bit or just on this corner here where it touches the block. So I'm gonna trim that a little bit. I can see that by eye. So I do a little trim on that, but it sits nicely along the sides. It doesn't stick down below the chassis. So it doesn't need much trimming or a tiny bit there. So again, I can just do some tiny little bits of trimming and get it to sit nicely on the chassis. There we go. Put that back on the block. Check the front of the chassis and front of the body shell and how it's sitting. That's sitting much nicer. Still maybe a little bit close in this corner here. So I might do a little bit more trimming there, but I'm gonna do another little bit of work first before I finally trim that. Next, I'm gonna cut out the rear wheel arches. Now for this, I have this nice little tool from Colhosa. I think I got it through Slot Racing Shop. I'll put a link in the description of my video so you can see where, it, where it's from. This is a 22 millimeter version. And I also have a length of 332 piano wire with two spikes at the end. I'm going to put that through the axle bearings of my chassis. Sit my chassis on the block. Now you can see that it's, it's nearly, or it's just a fraction wider than the chassis. Because I'm going to use this to mark the centre point of my rear wheels. So I'm going to get the pans in the rearward position. You could again do it with the pans in the forward position. It doesn't matter, but I'm gonna do it with the pans in the rearward position. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of pressure on the outside of body shell. And I'm gonna mark the center of the axle. So you can see now where it's just pushed through at the center there and the center there. So then remove the body shell. Now to use this tool, if I take the tool apart, you can see it actually has a spike in this half of the tool. So I'm gonna put that half of the tool through the body shell where it was marked in the central place. I'm gonna take the other half of the tool, which has a cutting blade in it and put that onto the spike. 
Now, what we can do here is we can now turn the tool and it's going to cut a nice circular cutout for the wheel arch. There we go. And you can see I've cut out a nice 22 millimeter diameter cut out for my wheel arch and I'll do the same the other side. There we go, both sides done. Really nifty little tool. It's really nice because it means that your rear wheel arches are centralized nicely on your tires. Now, you might be saying, well, what happens if the pans move backwards and forwards? Well, you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to trim these little rear fins a little bit to give me a little bit more clearance around my tire. I'm also going to maybe neaten up that edge slightly um, next. Now, some people like to leave the side of their body shell completely enclosed, whereas I like a little bit more flex on the side of my body shells sometimes. So I'm actually going to trim up around the front wheel arch slightly to give the side of my body shell more flex. This is why I haven't finished the front of the body shell entirely yet, because it might move slightly as I trim this. So I'm going to use my masking line as a guide in front of my front pinhole, and I'm going to trim up around. And I'm only going to do just just short of the top of the wheel arch. So I'm leaving a little bit in the top of the wheel arch, gives a bit more strength to the front of the shell. Haven't quite gone all the way up. And then about a millimeter further in, I'm going to trim again until I eventually meet at the top of my cut. And then remove that little bit in between. That's just so the body shell can move freely and doesn't get fouled up by the wheel arch at the front. And do the same the other side. There we go, both sides trimmed, body shell can move nice and freely on the sides, but I've left the front wheel arch in because it still helps with aero around the outside of the body shell. As I was happy with the sides of my body shell and the way they sat on my chassis, I'm now going to take a small piece of wet and dry paper and I'm just going to clean up this cut edge just to sand it down, just to make sure it's nice and smooth with no little nicks or dents in it that could cause it to rip and tear up the side of the body shell. Some people put a large uh, piece of wet and dry paper and they sand the whole bottom of the body shell, but I can sometimes think that that gives you a slightly uneven surface as the body shell flexes, etc. So I like to just hold the sides of it in my hand with a small piece and then work my way along just by hand, taking out any small nicks or dents, as I say, or slight slashes with the scissors that might have occurred as you were trimming the side of the body shell. So just sanding that by hand. It should make it nice and smooth. And you should be able to feel the difference with your fingers. You should feel that it's nice and smooth all the way along the bottom there and you shouldn't be able to feel any there's a tight little, tiny little bit there that i'm feeling so i'm just going to re sand that little bit again until it's nice and smooth and then you know that there's no places or let it's much less likely to tear up the side of your body shell because you've cleaned it all off along that bottom edge i've not done around the front yet because i haven't finished fitting the front but i'm going to do these sides because i'm going to reinforce the pinholes with a little bit of tape in a minute Sand the other side. Okay, I'm now happy with that. That's nice and smooth on the two sides of my body shell. So now it's time to reinforce those pinholes a little bit further. Now Eurosport racing can be quite a crash fest sometimes here in the UK. So I'm going to show you how I reinforce the body shell to make it hopefully strong enough to survive the race. So I use this packing tape. 
here. Again, if I find where I got it from, I'll put a link in the description on the video below. So I'm going to start by reinforcing around those front wheel arches where I've made that little cut up into the arch, because otherwise I've got a sharp edge here and it's likely to tear on the body shell there. So I'm going to take my strapping tape and in this case I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, five and I'm going to cut it then in half like that. So I've got two strips, that are five little sections long and about half the width of the tape. I'm then going to use that to go just above where my pinhole is and I'm going to put the tape so it goes slight angle on this body shell up and over the top of the wheel arch and inside the wheel arch so that it goes just across where that cut comes right up into the wheel arch. I'm going to put a bit that side, same the other side and then I'm going to use the rounded edge of my uh, tweezers just to flatten it down and push it against the body shell. Just to make sure again it's stuck nicely to the body shell. There we go. And then I'm going to reinforce over the top of the wheel arch. So again, I'm going to use a piece maybe one, two, three, four, five long, maybe six long in this case six long, but this time not quite so wide. So we're probably talking about a third of the width of this tape. Put that across the top of the arch. Again, I want to put it across the top of the arch just so basically it stops that little cut from tearing further up the arch and gives the arch a little bit more of a support. Then flatten it down, make sure it's stuck nicely to the body shell. Notice how I've crossed the tape over so it's reinforced into there really nicely. There we go. And now to finish off the front pin holes. So to finish these off, I'm now going to cut a piece that's one, two, three, four, five long. Start on the outside. Put it over. Now notice with this strapping tape here that I've got, I'm going to put it so that the one of the pieces of strapping goes along the bottom like that and then it stops the pinhole, or the pinhole is less likely to tear out of the bottom of the chassis. And then I've got so two pieces on the two sections on the outside, three on the inside. So that folds up nice and tightly on the bottom of the shell and it should go up far enough to go up above your Lexan reinforcing and also to connect with the tape piece of tape that goes up inside the wheel arch. Again the end of my tweezers I'm just going to use just to flatten that down make sure it's stuck down nicely onto the body shell. You may be able to get away with using slightly less reinforcing tape than I'm using but sometimes that can peel off as I say, if it's not too sticky, this stuff's pretty good, but you can get some stuff that's not very sticky um, and it will peel off if you don't use a large enough piece. Obviously, the body shell would be lighter if you use less, but it will be slightly weaker as well. So I've done that side. I am going to do the other side again. That's the front pin holes. The rear pin holes, again a piece that's five long, one, two, three, four, five. Two on the outside. Again, it should also go over the Lexan reinforcing on the inside and helps hold that against the body shell as well. Make sure that's stuck nicely. Same the other side. Now that's on there, just going to put the pin through the holes and just clean the holes out again, as we did before. You should still be able to see the holes through the tape. 
If not, you could probably feel the holes. Clean them up with my little drill. Just gets the sticky out of the holes and leaves them nice for the pins to go through. Clean any sticky off the drill. There we go, so we have all four pinholes cleared out. Now we're going to put it back on the chassis and see how it sits.